And welcome back to another exciting episode of our Less of a Man podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have some t- we laughing. We have some technical difficulties to start off with. Uh, you you a good Char now? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so as always, man, we just want to start off with our mental health check in. So EJ. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> this week's been a struggle. For me, I really feel very unmotivated and I'm not really wanting to deal with a lot of the customers at both of my jobs. I've, I've had enough of the Karens and the, um, the Kevins. Yeah, like Karen Kevins every host. Kevin, the, yeah, okay. Kevin. All of this stuff, man. Like, people are just like off the chains. Like, literally, this lady, um, every time she comes in, she, the same thing, she drives a Porsche. And it's not an old Porsche. It's the new Porsche. It's like oh, nice. okay. a, it's a pearl Porsche. Oh, and wow. she's some type of like, I want to say like uh, Middle Eastern descent. As you can tell she's from New York. She wants this coffee that's 12 ounces. She wants us to put it in a 26 ounce cup. Oh, really? And she wants us <laughs> to fill the drink all the way to the top with milk. <laughs> So she wants to pay only for a 12 ounce cup and make her drink into 26 ounces and oh, pay wow. for 12 ounces. And she doesn't feel like we should upcharge her. So she doesn't so want to pay for the milk. But listen, she's every time. Yeah. So dealing with people like that, I kind of had enough this week. Um, as far as me and myself, I've been low key just trying to like, you know, bring it down and get calm because there's so much going on around the world today. But yes, yeah, it is a lot going on in the world today. Hmm. So what about you, Char? Um, it's been okay. I, I've been having, I've had an okay week. Um, just okay. Yeah, I'm trying to get back in these streets, so I'm looking for a job. So I'm putting a lot of applications. Um, a few hits here and there. So that's been kind of the depressing part of my week. Um, I've been having some interesting conversations this week. So um, I guess we'll talk about those a little bit later because it's related to our topic. Um, but overall, it's been cool. Um, we had some unexpected family from Chattanooga to come in last night to say hello to Shanita and her mom. So that was a surprise. Oh, are they staying with you? No, they were here last night. So okay. I came in from doing my microderma abrasion for the month <laughs> and only to discover that they were actually here visiting for it. <laughs> so I didn't expect them to come in. So it, was, it ended up being a nice visit because it, it gave me the chance to learn more about her family that lives in Chattanooga. So but other than that, it don't sound like it was a nice visit. Tight bro. nation. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I you know I um, resorted to going upstairs. I, went upstairs while the visiting was happening. Wow. Why would you do that? Because also it was all all female so at that moment so I gave her a chance to kind of get to talk to her family instead of just kind of being the center of attention. So The center of attention? That's so not southern by common Yeah. No, it was southern because I actually went to the store and purchased pizza for um, for them to eat. Well, I didn't purchase pizza. I went ahead and picked up the pizza. So, and made sure everything was okay before I went upstairs and Kind of abandoned everyone and did my own abandoned. thing. Abandoned. I just don't like. I guess I just don't like your wording of it. No, it was a great visit um, for them. So I'm happy she got a chance to talk to her family. Okay. Well, Raw's not here because he's sick, quote unquote. Yeah. We have to confirm. We have to confirm the sickness. Yeah, we have to confirm before he comes back. So you might yeah. not see him for for three weeks because we have to confirm. Um, what the sickness is. I was asking a question because somebody put a meme there. Like, do people get regular sick anymore or is it all <laughs> coronavirus? It's all coronavirus. It's all coronavirus. Right. Everything's, Everything's related. Related. <laughs> So we're, you might not see Raw for a couple of weeks while we do some investigating to figure out but <laughs> the early sickness. Early reports is saying that it's food poisoning. That's what we heard. So yes. Can coronavirus cause uh, food know, poisoning right? symptoms? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, get well, whatever you're sickness maybe. Get well, but figure out what it is yeah, before you come back. Temperature will be taken at the door, just let you know. Right. So, with me, um, I know that I usually, you know, make a little joke about my week or whatever, but I want to be a little serious with this because the NFL just started and uh, just some things that were very interesting and I think it, it coincides with what we kind of talk about already. First, I want to talk about Dak Prescott. When he was talking about his... Um, mental health issues and being open about it and his mom had just passed his brother had committed suicide 
so he's talking about even being isolated within the coronavirus times and going through his emotions and Shockley, uh, Skip Bayless, which is one of the commentators on Fox Sports 1 on Undisputed, criticized him for it, basically saying that he shouldn't, he's a leader of the football team and he shouldn't openly express his emotions because that'd be a weakness, basically huh. his depression. And I thought that was interesting because we just had a topic Literally. Yeah. personally about uh, toxic masculinity because that's what this is and also about mental health. And I just was like, that's shocking to me that we're kind of still having these conversations. Yeah. And I just thought it was it was very important. It was sad for, for me, for us who have all dealt with, you know, kind of mental health problems to kind of hear that, that he should not open up about it because he's the leader of the Dallas Cowboys, which well, was crazy. To me. I mean, and even aside from the mental health, how are you going to tell someone how to mourn? Like, that's a process of grieving. Like, right. maybe the opening up and speaking about it is helping him to grieve. He not only lost a parent, but then lost... Lost a brother, yes. Sibling, so. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, so, of course, um, his other brother, they didn't respond too kindly to that. But to, to sit here and tell, because he that press, I basically said that I opened up to make it easier for somebody else to open up, which is what we all do, right? This is why we're on the show. We all do that. Just It was just interesting to, to hear that take, and I was shocked kind of by it, especially because Skip Bay is a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. I was just shocked that that was kind of his take on it mm-hmm. the other thing I, I do want to talk about is football related again and and Shar actually brought this up a little earlier and he was talking about how we're all supposed to be one america right and the problem is though these so during the football game the kansas city chiefs and houston texans this was after the national anthem got some this has nothing to do with the flag it has nothing to do with the anthem People were booing them as they were locked arms to show unity. Now, this is a team that has white people, black people. So it's, it's, it's a mixture. But people were booing in the stands as they were showing unity. I think that's just interesting about how we are as America. Like, we only want to be Americans when we're going against other black people. You know what I'm saying? So when we talk about Black Lives Matter, now we want to talk about All Lives Matter. We want to be, we want to say America is not this racist place and we all should be Americans. But when you see stuff like this, mm-hmm. how as us as black people, because they're basically just saying unity. They're not saying... They weren't saying anything specific. Yeah, yeah. they're green. just saying unity. They're just saying we're together, the basis of what America is, and people still boo them. Yeah. So, and that's why I'm on my kick. Char's laughing. That's why I'm on my kick that... <laughs> yeah. We just had a conversation about do we want to... Em- Embrace the the um, philosophies of um, Marcus Garvey, <laughs> or do we want to try to become the vision that MLK had for our country in terms of one unit, one entity? We all under one belief in this one America, and it seems like that. Well, not seems like it is. We are definitely separated as a country, just in every aspect when we start to think about our lives. I know Edward brought up the point of when we look at the Asian community, when we look at um, Hispanic communities, when we look at the Indian communities, that all these communities kind of create their separate entity within the America that we live in. And should we, as, as Black people, take a page from that and start to kind of develop our own communities where we try to become one and I think that's an interesting topic for us to explore in terms of what we really want as a country or as a people I guess which one is more important yeah because I think we sit here and act like like I got family members to say I don't like being called African American they don't like the term it's like we're all Americans mm-hmm. well they were all Americans too when they showed unity on this building got boot yeah so it's just like so is it what's reality and what's perception? I would be interested if Martin Luther King was alive today. What would his comment be when he saw yeah. that? Yeah. Like, literally, no, it was nothing about a flag. It was nothing about the national anthem. All they did was stood there locked arms. Uh, I know this is a weird question. So, what I know what your take on what we should do. Uh-huh. So, does that mean we have a, a B NFL and a B NBA? Or how would that work in terms of how you see? What I well, be. they had already talked about at the beginning of the NBA bubble. They talked about uh, starting their own NBA league, mm-hmm. not, not NBA, but own basketball league. Um, 
I just always believe that the only way we're going to truly be equal is separation. Huh. And that's, I mean, that, that, I feel like that's kind of the answer because, again, what we just saw on Monday was people <laughs> locking arms, showing unity, and people in the stands booing that. Okay. So then it's not about the flag. It's not about American pride. It's literally you're booing about race. Like, it's, it's just, and that's why I say with these situations that happen, the only way we can truly be equal, I would think, is, is by kind of separation and building our own communities to be separate and the money with the state within those communities. So do you way. feel, I guess what is what crossed my mind just now is it seems like all the communities that I mentioned are minorities in our country. Right. When I really kind of pay attention to it. So the question is, is... Um, is that do you feel like there's enough people in our country? Do you feel like what you what you said is the belief of everyone, or do you think the majority of our country truly want to to embrace the concept of what America is supposed to be? Uh, I don't know. You want to take that? Um, I I don't think I think for if we talk about you know people as a whole, I don't really feel like um we understand what that means Mm -hmm. only because there's so many things that are already in play that would come to making an equal playing field for all people in America. Um, And we don't really talk about those things, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Now, will I say for Black people in general, do we want to necessarily like, uh, or do we feel like we necessarily fit into that? I will say most people probably feel like they don't. Well, it wasn't built Um, for us from the beginning. Very true. That's true. But also to your point of, if we look at communities, it's not not like something that we're doing that like where we're separating each other. It's a natural separation, right? Mm -hmm. So usually black people gravitate to where black people are, Indian people, Jewish people. So it's a natural progression. White people, they live in their areas um, as well. So it's like a natural silo, right? For each of those. The only difference is just how we respond to that, Mm -hmm. right? we instead of coming together to build up our communities we kind of tear it down and we tear each other down so i think you know when you're talking about how we rebuild ourselves we have to start to recycle our money into those areas we were having this discussion earlier um we have to funnel our money back into our areas build our black businesses in those communities and then also pull in opportunities to those from from different areas but the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we build up our communities so that these businesses that we do want and we decide which businesses mm-hmm. we want in those areas uh, will want to do business there as well. So but, we kind of need to market ourselves mm-hmm. by first improving our own communities, coming together to improve our own communities. Okay. And I think we'll see change there. And I'll give you one more challenge to that because the question is, can we truly once again become a Tulsa, Oklahoma? where we know that they created their own resources, had their own supply chains, where the money did stay in their community. Well, why couldn't we? That's what Ed was saying, that well, we have to change my think about though. the structure of our country, and I, and I think we've had a conversation about this. It's, it's more than just owning your own business. It's getting the resources to supply that business. It's and all that. It, I just, the example I always bring up, because I used to work for um, Coca-Cola, and one of my jobs was to go to various suppliers that we use for to be, to um to um put together our product, and you think about a coke. I'll just use the example of a coke bottle. With a coke bottle, you have the bottle itself. You have a cap. You have the label. You have the resin that it used to make the bottle. And each of those individual entities, it takes a company to provide those parts. With every supplier that I went to, the majority of those owners were white, and the presence of African Americans to that entity of the business was was um, not present. So where we come into play in terms of being business owners is that we are selling the Coke, but we're not responsible for actually making the product that actually builds it. So even if we have that concept of becoming black owned and supporting black businesses, we still in essence are making our counterparts much richer. And those are the sometimes the things that we don't think about as far as can we truly get to the point where we are able to stand around on our own? Because in a sense, we're already a few steps ahead behind, I mean, in the, in even being able to build that type of um, system in the country that we live in. So let's talk about one thing and let's uh-huh. not downplay the power that you know, we, there is importance the, in the power that, that we have as yeah. black Americans in America. Yeah. Three trillion 
spend dollars and spending power is what we have mm -hmm. as black people just in America. Yeah. Three trillion dollars. We can do whatever the heck we want. <laughs> we can build whatever the heck we want with that amount of money. Now, what I will say is that we don't encourage our black children to go into those areas, right? Mm -hmm. We need to build them into, you know, we need to kind of encourage them mm -hmm. to go into engineering. We need to mm -hmm. encourage them to go into medical fields. We mm -hmm. need to encourage them to go into these other areas that we don't necessarily see a lot of representation. How are we going to do that? We have to start back in our communities. We have to get our educational systems to, onto par with other areas around them. They are not going to get those opportunities unless they are educated enough to want to go to college and understand the importance of moving to college if it's necessary because some of those things don't require a college degree. Yeah, I agree. So, well, that's my point also, yeah. Also, to your point about whether or not um, we can sustain ourselves. So, so let's talk about Apple. Apple is a huge company. Do you know that most of their parts come from Google or um, from Samsung makes products for them because mm -hmm. they can't create it themselves. Now, did that stop Apple from becoming a huge corporation? Absolutely not. So what's your point is, yes, we can use white-owned businesses to build our communities and we can learn about their techniques and how they're doing it to then create our own businesses. So might we need to rely on other resources that are already there? You don't recreate the wheel, right? Yeah. You learn it. You, you learn it and you do better. You you improve upon what you're learning from them. So in essence, we do have the ability to do it. Will it be something that we can do immediately? No. Yeah. We'll tap the resources that we can tap, figure out how to do it better and more efficient, and then take it into our areas. Yeah. I absolutely agree with you there. It's just that do we have the organization to actually create that's it. That's the problem. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a whole at. other yeah. And, 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 I, whole and I think that kind of starts with the next generation. So we have to, the, the problem is that we are so kind of far behind mm. on like it's almost like each time we're starting over and i have this problem me and my wife talked about this like i went to college and i graduated the top of my class when i went to college but my mom only told me to go to college that. yes well yeah i say it a lot <laughs> i have not heard you, you say that i've in heard it several years. i heard it several times yes i graduated magnum cum laude and um okay. my mom really pushed me to go to college but did she ask me what I wanted to do in college? Mm -hmm. She just thought, go to college. And I literally thought going to college was go there, get good grades, and the companies will be beating down their door for you. And that, we all know, that, ain't, sure. that is sure. not how it's happened. So I didn't understand about networking and marketing. Mm -hmm. So when I got out of college, I was more depressed because I was like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. What do I do now? I graduated the top of my class and I'm still serving tables. Like, what do I do? And then then we're not even talking about like debts that you're accumulating exactly. from it. Like I went to a HBCU and I love my HBCU experience. I would do it all again. Shout out Clark Atlanta. Yep. To the Clark Atlanta university. But in saying that, would I, pro if I would have understood like private school and public school, you know what I'm saying? Like, would I have made a different decision understanding the, the financial implications of that mm -hmm. and that's not something that we're taught and I, I get mad and I'm talking to um, my wife about it and I'm just like why didn't our parents teach us this why didn't they teach us this like uh, my wife's parents are are pretty well off they're doing really well and I'm just like why didn't they teach us? why didn't they set us up with college funds account why did and it was like they didn't know right? they, did not they know. didn't know yeah and they literally did not know so they can't so now we have to do better for our kids, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what kind of puts us behind, but now we have to be the generation that we're smart about financial, we're smart about um, businesses and jobs. Is it even, like you say, isn't even worth going to college? If you go to college, is it worth to get a master's degree because I have a master's degree and I feel like I wasted my money. Yeah. So is it even worth all those times? So we have to really look at our kids and our generation. And it made me think, of course, I said in almost every podcast episode, I was like, I mean, and um, I always equate of how to teach him. So I was thinking like parenting of how our upbringing and how we kind of came up and how that affects the stuff that we're talking about now. Because if we want these stuff, we want our own Wakanda. Mm -hmm. It starts with our kids and teaching them about the culture, about finances um, and have them thinking of that mind frame to say that you don't have to only be a athlete or a rapper or an actor there's all these other things that you can also be successful at so i guess my first question to you guys is what how did your parents kind of what was their parenting style um for you guys 
It's like nobody yeah, wants to I get their parents in trouble. I, 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 <laughs> I feel first. That's fine. Um, well, to your point, as far as from the education side of it, um, I was never told about the what it requires to go to college. I was just only told that I was supposed to go to college. So that's so true. Yeah. So to my surprise, when I find out about financial aid and FAFSA and all these items that had to be managed that my parents, but that my mom in particular had no idea about. So when I remember my first day of going to school, I was handling all my FAFSA um, um, items and making sure everything was taken care of more than my mom. But to answer your question, I had a mom who was very strict, had a very specific goal in terms of her expectations for me and what was expected of me. I wasn't told... I wasn't given the option of whether or not I had, I could go to college. I was told that I was going to college. And to your point, Daryl, I wasn't taught in terms of what happens next. Once you finish, you know. Yeah, what do you do? Do, but, you do? But the problem is yeah. we're like the first ones graduating, yeah. so they don't know. So they don't know. But what, what, what I want to ask you, when you went to college, like, did your mom ever ask you, like, what did you want to do when you were no, in college? No, I was told. So <laughs> that's an interesting story. I was told I was going to be a doctor. I wasn't. Um, <laughs> I didn't have the option. Even from I remember it from my kindergarten graduation that I was I got when I grow up I want to be a doctor. That's what and from that that was stuck. So when I went to college. I was actually I was like in high school. I was like okay, so I'm supposed to be a doctor. So where's the easiest doctor I can become? <laughs> so when I wrote my concept, I was like okay, I can go into pharmacy. So then I decided to go into pharmacy, and I was actually a semester away from coming to Mercer School of Pharmacy when I decided to change my major to engineering. And and it was because I was in college and I took that time to actually discover what I wanted to do. But as far as my mom being that motivator and telling me, or giving me those options or telling me what you could or, or couldn't be, that wasn't really my story. Yeah, that, that's funny because yeah. we have similar stories with my mom. Like I was telling them that I was supposed to go to basketball camp this one summer. I was super excited about going. I brought home a B and my mom canceled it. And she was like, you're not going because you brought home a B. She, she, my mom cared about, because my mom was successful in school too, but she cared about the grades. Mm -hmm. But the one thing she didn't do was ask, what, what do you want to do when you're in college? So I took mass media arts. So the reason I went into that is because I went to a college tour in Savannah State. Mm -hmm. And they was like, you know, they broke us up by majors. Mm -hmm. And they, they was... Like the undecided people, what do y'all want to do? And one of them said, "You might like mass media arts. Why don't you try that?" And I said, "Okay." And, really? And that's how, like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I got into it. But then when I was in, so I took that as a major at, at Clark. But then I started branching off to other things, like my minors in African American history. I started to understand that I, I really enjoyed, especially African American history. But also one of the biggest things is I took a calculus class. Oh. Okay. And a guy comes up to me, the professor. He says man, you probably should change your major to calculus. I didn't know what that meant, like what I could go with. I was like, why would I do that? Like to be a teacher, I didn't understand like like engineering, engineering and, and yeah. all that stuff going in. And as that's because, and I felt like for my life, that was a major missed opportunity for me because I do enjoy, now that I'm learning about cars and, and fixing cars, I do enjoy that aspect of it. But I feel like if I had somebody to nurture me, right? And, and and help me discover that instead of me discovering it at what like 24 25 yeah. and still have no idea um kind of what it is so what we kind of do now is um my daughter she likes to like she's very creative so she likes drawing she likes telling stories so i ask her questions always ask her questions she was like she made the story with uh somebody a cat a mean cat and i asked her i was like well what makes a cat mean what like and I and I ask her all these questions and I'm saying you have to tell you have to have a character that the audience can relate to the audience can have a feel for uh -huh. should what should the audience feel for this character uh -huh. so I'm trying to branch mm -hmm. her thinking of it because that's something we didn't do so what's your story yeah. EJ <laughs> so my parents were completely different um I mean like as far as like styles themselves my dad is probably the more calm like relaxed one um but he has like this like fifth gear that would just keep, keep going and, and any any second he'd go from zero to ballistic. Um, my mom is 
a lot like me, right? She has, she's the most talkative one. She's the one that will definitely give you her opinion about what she feels in that moment. <laughs> I mean, I think I get a lot of myself from that. Um, so as far as college, um, the things that I was interested in were not the things that I was necessarily pushed in. So um, if I go back to when I was in high school and I was in middle school, I was like interested in like gymnastics. I was interested in artsy things mm -hmm. and I never was really pushed in that direction. Um, and in fact, when I started my gymnastics career, um, I was walking almost two miles to the gym um, oh, and wow. I was paying for it myself mm. with the job that I had. Oh, wow. So um, I wanted to do it so much that I took the initiative to kind of like push myself in that direction. So also, you know, with college, they wanted me to go to college. I would have been the first person, not from my immediate family, because my older sister, she didn't live with us. She lived with our grandparents in Tennessee. She did go to college. She was like a lifetime college student, <laughs> for real. Like she was almost before her, her death. She was um, at her dissertation uh -huh. for her uh, PhD. So I would have been, the, I was the first person in my immediate family that lived together to go to college and graduate. So there was this big push um, because neither of my parents were fin finished college. My mom went for a little bit and then um, she ended up dropping out. So there was a push to go to college. Like you said, there was no push on, in a direction to go. I kind of um, was told that what I wanted to look into, which was like fashion and um design was not a lucrative like opportunity mm -hmm. so i was pushed more into the medical field so i started pre-med oh, wow. um, when oh, i went wow. into college um and i got all the way through most of the pre-med and i was like this is too much work i don't feel like doing it so i went into nursing and i was right at the point where i should start nursing school because i did all my prerequisites and i was like i don't want to do all this so then i went into <laughs> healthcare administration which is the same thing as what my mom is so my mom was the a lot of the push um She's a healthcare administrator, and so I did get a degree, an undergraduate degree, and then a graduate degree in um, healthcare administration. Um, as far as in school, my grades were also pushed. I pretty much had decent grades. When I was in college, my grades were terrible. And so I actually got older and left and came back and finished, and you know they got better. But there was not a push at all, so a lot like you guys. Um, where she, like where they saw my strengths, they should have pushed me. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that, and right. education was just not there. Like I have so much student loan debt; it's crazy. Um, so there's definitely opportunities in that that front. So we're all similar kind of in that respect. Okay. Yeah, and it's funny that I think the the, the main jobs they try to push is a, a lawyer and a doctor. So yeah. they pushed me to be a lawyer. So I, I took one lawyer class, and I was like, man, I hate. Mm -hmm everything about this man so i i dropped out at, a, at, at yeah. that realm out of one class but i also i had an advisor because my grades were so well in college she was like you could if you do this this and this you can graduate early and i was like nope because you don't know what you're i don't do. know what i was gonna yeah. do when i graduated so why would i ever do that like no i was like nah i'm not doing that yeah. like literally my last semester was like two classes just and they were bs classes but i was like i tried to kind of push it as well because when you're serving tables people ask you why are you here and you literally say i'm in school so then when you stop taking that away oh, we wow. had an actual i had an actual uh, one of my employees she they asked her that like what are you still doing here and she had a degree in accounting and she cried they like she cried at the table because she's like i i don't know why i'm kind of here <laughs> yeah, so it's like we, our our parents just don't know. So I'm, I'm I'm curious. Then, so what do you think our parents were kind of preparing us for? If they wasn't like, like they were trying to prepare us to go to school, but they wasn't really preparing yeah. us for school. What were they preparing us for? I, I what do you think? My mom was preparing me for a life that she believed that she didn't have, mm -hmm. and she didn't know the steps to get to that life right. but she at least knew that education could lead me in a direction of getting there right. so she knew that much because yeah when i when, when i sit back and think about it i in terms of all the research that i did um it was just all it, it was all me it was never it was all my mom only focused on the grades 
and that's, that was our only focus. And then, and when it came, like in terms of residential for ACT, SAT, as far as filling out applications for school, as far as um, making sure my financial aid and my awards letter was put in, that was that really was all me. And yeah, I mean that just was the the, the standard. I just even remember similar to your story, Daryl, when I got a C in um, one of my classes. My mom actually um, sent me to this place where, you know, I taught the other kids who were problem children. <laughs> and, um, wow. You know, when I sit, when I was talking, when, I, when, the, when we, was in the, we were literally in a circle, and, and I got the therapist at the time, he was saying, so why are y'all here? She's like, yeah, I, I had a fight with my grandma, and I hit my grandma in the face and all this, and, kick, you know, she kicked me out, and I ran away from home, and I'm like, why are you here, sir? I got a C in music, so. Um, in hey, music? Yeah, that's what it was, something like that. But, yeah, so, but, you know, that was, so I think that's, that, that's what my mom was looking for. She was just pretty much looking for me to develop a life out, that was better than the one that she was currently having. And ironically, me and my mom actually end up graduating the same time because when we, when she moved out to oh, Georgia, wow. you know, she ended up getting her. She already had a degree to be a dental assistant and substance abuse technician, but she got her bachelor's um, when she moved out here to Georgia. We end up graduating the same time. So, but yeah, to answer your question, that was her motivation for me to have a better life than she, at the time she had. Just so, don't know how to get there, though. Just don't know how to get there at all. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's probably the same. Yeah. The consensus is that they know that they know that it's tied to something, or that my parents mm-hmm. knew that it was tied to a better life. They wanted better for myself, um, but just no, no clear understanding of what what the path yeah. of the journey what that actually was. Like. Yeah, mm-hmm. my dad actually didn't get an opportunity to go to college. Like for him mm-hmm. and his um, siblings, they were made to go into the military. Mm-hmm. All right. And I did try to do ROTC in college, man. Yeah. That's not my life. <laughs> it sounds like, like you were very life. clear and very understood what you didn't want to do. Yeah. What I, yeah. I, did. What I, did. And I just had no push in like where the area that I wanted to do. Right, right, yeah. right. Um, I almost went to the military. Uh, it was after college, and I was just I was one of those times where I was depressed, and I was just like, I guess I'll do this. Like it was it was kind of. But it was never like. <laughs> it was never like. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to. I can I'm imagine you in the military. Get, huh? I'm trying to like I imagine would, you in the military. Yeah, I can see that's that how, be a whole different era. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's what I'm saying. But that's how kind of lost you are at that moment because mm-hmm. you really don't know what to do at this moment. Yeah. And I'm sitting here a couple years. I've graduated. I have a master's degree, and I have no idea what to do. First of all, I don't. I have a, a MBA. I don't want to be in business. I mean, in business in a sense, because I hate corporate America. Now that I'm in corporate America, I hate it. I didn't want to be a part of it. So, but it's just no direction, man. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like, they're teaching us kind of like they want you to be successful, but they're teaching you survival tactics, Mm -hmm. not really being successful because Mm -hmm. they don't know. And then when you actually get to the point where you get to the finish line in your educational process, you don't nobody knows what to do because nobody has ever been here before yeah right so my question to you guys is i'm a parent um shara you're talking about potentially being a parent potentially yeah um and where you talked about you're off and on about being a, yeah. a parent <laughs> ask me tomorrow it might be different yeah it might be different um if you guys let's just say you guys have a kid on the way right what do you guys think or have you guys discussed what your parenting style will kind of be Okay. So, <laughs> they, they pushing it. To go first again. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I, when I think about my life um, and how it ended up, where success was defined as getting your education, getting married, and finding your home and having the 2.5 kids that you have. 2.5? Uh, you know, the dogs. And, oh, the dogs. Uh, yeah. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And although I don't have the kid, the kids portion of it, um, I did accomplish the go to school, get married, buy a home. So when I accomplished those goals, I, that's when I kind of got lost in a sense because it's like, of course, what's next? After you do, like, what is truly success once you achieve the things that you've been told success was? 
So if I, with my children, I would be a lot open and probably pay attention a little bit more to what they seem to thrive at. Like if I see my kid have an interest in, you know, building things, I would encourage them to probably, you know, go toward the engineering realm or if they seem more artistic, I would try to encourage them in whatever arts Mm -hmm. that they seem like they seem like they're picking up with and actually give them more of a vision of what they can have with their lives outside of manifesting those physical things in terms of actually truly right. trying to um, figure out what gives you joy. And joy may not come from getting married. Joy may not come from buying the house that you believe is considered success and actually really taking time to explore what truly makes you happy. And that can be being the richest person in the world or just, <laughs> you know, um, being able to explore whatever arts or whatever you choose to explore. But I think the other half of it, which I did get to my mom, from my mom, is that to be able to sustain yourself, even to, um, to pursue your dream and still be able to take care of yourself in, you know, in whatever way you need to be taken care of. So that would probably be the things that I would instill in my kids that probably wasn't instilled with me in terms of, once you reach these goals, what's next in your eight state of happiness? Right. And this is so, not a knock to our parents. I don't yeah. want. I don't want our parents to hear this. Yeah, think I'm sorry, we're, Mama. Like we're dissing them, but this is. It's just. This not I mean, you got to talk yeah. about these things if you want to improve in the future, right? So yeah. you have to talk about the um, the opportunities, so that we can, you know, make sure that we do a better job. So the missed opportunities are the things that we just need to make sure we discuss, and then. Um, you know, it's not a knock to them. They did the best that they could, yeah. the best that they knew how to do. Um, I think as far as my parents' style, when I have children, um, I think I I would be more of the person that's kind of like open to talk to them, right? right? I, right. I want to make sure there's an open line of communication. I also want to uh, give them resources, mm-hmm. um, help them make good decisions. Um, I want to be less of like an authoritative type of um, parent. Mm -hmm. Um, I think for me, my parents kind of dictated a lot of my life. I'm not saying I'm going to give freedom to the kids to do whatever they want to do, but I want to allow them to make decisions um, and I want them to understand the consequences of their decisions. Mm -hmm. So I think that sometimes we, we do need to shield kids from certain things, but we can't shield them so much that they can't get the concept of consequence. Right. Um, I think as far as education, I think it's important, just like um, Morgan was saying, I will also want to push them in the areas that I feel like they naturally are kind of going toward Mm -hmm. um, and they show interest in. And if that direction changes, that direction changes, I push them that way too. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's kind of how I feel like I I would want to be as a parent. Yeah, in mine, I try to, like, whatever that roadmap is, I try to map it out the easiest for them. Like, going to college is fun. I think, first of all, I would never take my experience away from college. I love I love college. And I think college is we push that for all our kids. But we're going to try to figure out the easiest map to kind of get there so they won't take on financial debt. They don't take on more classes than than what they need to and also like what you said about the consequences of their actions Mm -hmm. i i also i want to save enough money for my college fund for my kids college fund where they don't work for the first two years Mm -hmm. because i think it's important to have that experience and also be able to make healthy mistakes we don't want to make mistakes that are permanent but Mm -hmm. we want to make healthy because they should learn these mistakes and be able to learn from them so mm-hmm. having them to say that there's consequences um to their actions and them actually learning it and also giving them a roadmap to say if you go down this road these are the pros and cons of it so if we go down this road these are the pros and cons and help them make a decision that that's best for them and and, and hope and just to support them the problem with kids and y'all are going to laugh about this. Now, this is the issue with kids. Oh, Lord. <laughs> the issue is you are dealing with people that if your friends acted the way they act, you would never speak to them. Like, you would have nothing to do with these people. So kids, they're <laughs> selfish. <laughs> they're spoiled. They're, they think the world revolves around them. So sometimes as parents, it's very difficult to, <laughs> to deal with these on a daily basis because if any... Just think about... Your your wife or significant other friends, if they act 
fit the way kids act. <laughs> like you probably won't be friends with them. You wouldn't be friends yeah. with them, but these are the people that we have to have patience with and, and, and structure with, and uh, responsibility. Teach them responsibility when they're probably kicking and screaming the entire mm-hmm. entire way. So I wanted to. Uh, we seen a bunch of videos. You sent um, EJ sent us a bunch of videos mm-hmm. about discipline about parents disciplining their kids and the one video I'm sure people have seen was the 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 father on top of the little girl where mm-hmm. where the wife that was here in Atlanta, right? Yeah, it was in Clayton uh, County. Um where the the wife, which is not her mother, is videotaping it. And I'm guessing she snuck out to maybe smoke weed with friend. I don't know the full story, but he in his head trying to warn her about streets and, and discipline her like basically I'm going to give you this beating before outside gives you this beating. And uh-huh. and I think it's too much, personally. Uh, I don't know how y'all feel about it. Y'all can discuss how y'all feel about it. But what do y'all think, like, disciplinary style? Like, what would be your disciplinary style once they make mistakes that they will make? I'm definitely going to let you go first on this one. Because we have <laughs> yeah, I think we different were talking opinions. Briefly yeah. about this. We have, definitely have a difference of opinion. But yeah. just to comment on that video, um, I feel like it was excessive. I know a lot of people will disagree because Black people are raised in a certain way. And um, I don't think that my uh, philosophy on discipline aligns with the Black generation it or black not. people for the most <laughs> yours for, yeah because you're a, a, a better word you're yeah. super liberal okay, super, the time yeah the time out but I will say and please my, be good my <laughs> upbringing is that right. like we got beatings you know what i mean like so that's not something that i'm not accustomed to but in that instance i think at one point he was dra- he pulled her hair was yeah. dragging her by the hair was sitting on top of her at one point punching her punching she tried her, to run away he, bring, he, he chases her grabs her brings her back in and then throws her yeah. so like that's just what that's th- there's a line there that's drawn i think for me um i'm not really an advocate for um like whooping spankings mm-hmm. beatings that whole situation that's not something that i would want to naturally go to right um i think i'm more of like the experience right so i want you to understand what consequences result in your behavior mm-hmm. so i would probably probably be more of the parent that would try to think um creatively on how to show them hey this is what you're doing this is a consequence. And so they can actually like see and and experience that consequence mm-hmm. so that they know, hey, is this the decision that I want to make in the right. future? That's kind of how I do it. I do I will also, you know, of course do punishments like taking, you know, things away, right? Mm-hmm. Understand that privileges will be taken away. Mm-hmm. Um, those kind of things. I think the last resort for me would be like some type of like physical. Right. Like and that would it would have to be something, you know what I mean? Like, like you have to be at your I wits think, end. I would. I think for me to get to that point, if the child thought that they were going to harm me physically, that's when you're like. That's when, the, like, that's when, that's it, when you'll I knock would up. Need to take it there, but <laughs> uh, for any <laughs> other thing, I think it can be resolved. Number one, with communication, because uh-huh. I think a lot of times we do this discipline, but we don't even communicate why we're disciplined. Why we're disciplined? They we're don't understand why they're doing, this is happening. Spanking them, and then right. we want them not to cry in the process of of them being. <laughs> you <beat>. bet not <laughs> cry. <laughs> you bet, bet not. <laughs> hush them up, right? You know, like you got that. Like <laughs> that's traumatizing. You know what I mean? So it's like. Like those kind of things. Like, just, that's something I I'm saw. Trying to hold happen. it in. Exactly. <laughs> and you like literally are like dry heaving about to like yeah. have. I'm just like, being quiet. I right just now. remember that happening multiple times for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, that's the a, area for me. I'm not. I don't want to go that route. Right. Right. I'm sure Mama Miller. Uh, <clears throat> clear my throat. <laughs> did it? Did things a little differently? Let me clear my throat right quick. <laughs> okay. So. EJ and I have a very differ, differing, um, I guess, difference of opinion on this subject. I come from the school of, um, it takes a the village. The Yeah, huh? 
The, the whoop a hoe tribe? Yeah, 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 exactly that tribe. And you know, I, and I don't know what, what schools y'all went to, but in my schools, I mean, if you did something wrong, they took you to the principal's the vice, well, not the principal, but the assistant principal, and they would give you spankings. With, like, the principal a, did it? Yeah, not yeah. The, well, no, the assistant principal the assistant was responsible principal for, like, oh, you know, no. disciplinary stuff. Hell and, no. Yeah, yeah, I went to school in Tennessee, and it was yeah. still legal. No, it wasn't, wasn't, yeah. Yeah. wasn't like yeah. that here. Yes. I mean, so okay. I'm not like foreign yeah. like of a village because <laughs> i when i of course when i was yeah. growing up if you got and when we were living with my grandma you got the grandma first yeah, everybody who, yeah. yeah that's you different the though mom, the family is different and then you got whatever but then also like they were really close so like yeah. if uh-huh. you messed up at someone else's house they gonna spank yeah. you call yeah. your parents yeah. you yeah. don't yeah. get yeah. grandma yeah. Yeah. was the first person to meet you there yeah. whoever the first person is in the house when you get home you gonna get your and then as everyone else gets home so, yeah. Yeah. So, that's, yeah. so Edward just explained <laughs> the community that I come from. So, and I guess as a child, when I got weapons, I, I definitely understood the reason why I got a weapon. So, so it wasn't like I just got beat just for the sake of getting beat. So it was always a reason behind why you were being whipped. So I'm definitely, if, if once I become a parent, um, Whipping will definitely be an option in my household. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't know if it'll be the fifth Randy option, Jackson. but it's gonna definitely be based off of the situation <laughs> that the, happens at hand. The fifth option. Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna be the fifth option probably in my household, and and of course my wife feels the same way with regards to to getting whippings. Um, I mean, I'm not going. Um, Who's on Michael Jackson? Um, Daddy on um, Randy Jackson. I'm not, not Randy. Yeah. Is that Randy? Joe, I'm not Joe Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, yeah I'm what the hell am I thinking about? Yeah, yeah, what the hell am I thinking about? Joe, yes. He's not American Idol, by the way. Um, oh, yeah, I'm way off. Yeah, Randy, yeah. I'm way off. I won't be going Joe Jackson on my kid, but definitely if they did something wrong, I have no problem in grabbing that belt or grabbing going going out and get your switch and um go ahead and get the weapon. Because I feel like, um, and also I think it depends on the type of kid you have. Some kids just do not respond to you talking to them. And in my opinion, sometimes you just have to go a different route of actually trying to get them to understand. And I think for most part, people do whipping just to kind of instill the fear or the option of, you know, if you do something, this is what happens. So, you know, I mean, I got whippings. I turned out fine. I feel like if Have you turned out fine? I think I have. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I think it is if you if you, you have get, an unhealthy relationship. I know. So <laughs> With your I family. I'm a I'm a I'm a um uh, I'm a um uh, um uh, market this as whipping with a purpose. So long as you, yeah, so long as you whip with a purpose, I believe that you're gonna be okay. Now, to to comment on the video, that was way extreme. So I don't want anyone to think that I agree with anything that father did in that video. Um, not only to whip the child to the degree that they whip them, but also be recording at the same time. So that was definitely extreme. I'm definitely not for anything that severe, but definitely based off of the circumstances, not being afraid or having the option of actually whipping your child, I have no problem with. So um, I'm going leave it at that. So I have a different aspect on whipping, and, and I'll tell you what we actually do in our household. First of all, I had a stepdad who, you know, is, is not a secret he was a drug abuser and all that and he one day whipped my ass one day like like squared me up like to the point that i couldn't go to school the next day because i had basic bruised ribs and then he beat my brother so bad that he had welches all in his back my mom was afraid to for my brother to go to school because she thought that DFAS would be called on us. So he took he was out of school for two days mm-hmm. to make sure that happens. I, I remember one time, I don't remember what my brother did, but he was about to beat him. My mom comes rushing in in between, because basically what happened was my stepdad had a bad day, and now he's taking it out oh, wow. on my brother. Mm-hmm. So, But that's what I don't want to happen with, with the women. I don't like, like, I threaten you all day, poor woman. I will threaten you all day. But do I really want to do it? No. Okay. So with our daughter, we do. And that's the kind of the problem that we have. Like you're talking about, uh, EJ talking about talking to kids about the consequences. What I have learned in my travels <laughs> is kids don't give a fuck about at the all. consequences. They still going to do what they want to do. Like kids don't understand the big picture. Mm-hmm. They only understand what's in front of them right now. So like if you give them the option, A, um, you can have your candy now or you can have wait till later on today. They're going to have it now because they want it now. They mm-hmm. don't care about later on today, we'll go to the movies, we'll all hang out as a family, we're all eating 
can and now they're mad even then that they can't. they can't get it now yeah. kids do not care about the consequences and that's kind of what we are we have sit here and i want to be just like you i want to be the parent that talks talks about the situation my problem with me is i don't come across as very emotional like i'm very even killed so i don't so i don't get too up i don't get too mad about things but i also don't get too too sad about them either and I want you to be able to talk to me. So we try to have real conversations with her to see what's going on. And they just still still don't work. <laughs> like they haven't really worked in a sense. Like we even talked about maybe even therapy, maybe. Mm -hmm. But they still haven't worked in the, the disciplinary action to the point that I'm almost feeling like maybe women's the only option. But I, I still, but you can still, we still kind of don't want to go there. Like we sit there, we sit down and have a conversation with her. We sit there and talk to her about it. And it's, that's, that's my only thing, man. Do you think that, okay, so you have a good approach as far as the, let me try to talk it out. But what's talking don't work? That's, Are you willing to take out the belt? That's a question well, that I that I guess I I'm have. different because I'm stepdad. So being stepdad for me uh -huh. It's a little different. Like I have to, like my wife has to get to that point. Will she? Will, will she ever get to that point? I don't know, cause I don't think we want to get to that point. I don't what think we really mean? want to. No, I, I think we're at a point where it might have to happen, but I don't think we want it to happen. Well, also I feel that there's a whipping window. <laughs> so whipping, whipping window. <laughs> Whipping with a purpose, yeah, and, and a whipping, and then it's like because the, the levels of the options of whipping. And the reason why I say that is because if you get to a point where the kid is not used to getting whippings, when they get that first whipping, then they're gonna be like, um, what is this? Like, so they're gonna be confused. <laughs> what so is I this? think you need to incorporate the whipping at a very young age. I would say a good three. Uh, three, three. three You're whipping a three-year-old? And, and, and granted, let me explain the whipping procedure <laughs> for the three-year-old. Let's just say the little kid reach for a candy or they do something they're not supposed to do. You just take the little hand like say, no, no, don't them. do that. And they'll, you know, they'll cry because the kids are extreme. And then they'll, they'll go about their business. So then, so I think once you kind of slowly incorporate them into the whipping process, <laughs> You build up to oh the, you build up to like the, the, the like, stitches. Wow. <laughs> you know, you can't just go straight in the whipping. You gotta like you gotta prepare a kid for this whipping process. So But doesn't that but in, in Edward's point, then that doesn't that prove that it's not working? No, it works. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, has to be, to... Like, it can't just be straight whipping it has to be incorporated with conversation <laughs> and the whipping so like you whip and then you're like do you know why I whip you, you gotta, like, so you whip them first you before know, you explain so you explain like I'm about to whip you and you know why I'm about to whip you right. then you okay. whip them and say do we so can, what you said. so can we have yeah. a conversation about this whipping so I what, think afterwards, afterwards you have a conversation yeah. about it? so you know you, you go through your dry heave process where you like you know that, <laughs> that part and then once you do that part then you're like okay you know what you know why i whip you so I'm, I'm joking but i think some kids just do not respond to you just talking to them do you think though does the sex of the kid matter like if a little boy is it our job to whoop him? If a little girl, you think it's? Uh, your wife's I don't have him? kids personally, but in my opinion, if I, if we were to have kids, and then if it was a boy, I think either one of us could do it. I think if it's a girl, I would prefer for my wife to do it. So, I don't know how comfortable I would be whipping my little girl. I guess. So the boy gotta get it. The boy gonna get it. <laughs> oh, wow. and, and maybe that's a toxic masculinity <laughs> issue. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it's right or logic, but I would feel like if I had a daughter, I would love to have a different approach as far as how to handle her. So you want your wife to be a better? But yes, I want her to be a bad guy because I guess you know I don't want my daughter to hate me. <laughs> but your son, you're but fine my with. Son, he can get it. He can get it. Yeah. So that's kind of how I feel. This personally. is literally the conversation we just had. <laughs> I'm not, saying right. I'm not saying that's what toxic masculinity associated with. I'm just saying he can get it. That's what I'm saying. So I don't. I, I guess I want to get to. I in my heart don't want to whip any of them. Yeah. If I want to try to avoid it, if I have to. But 
we're getting to that point where we we might have to yeah to talk about it as an option. I'm just <laughs> astounded by. It. I I hope you don't have a boy. I hope because he's gonna get it. I would say I mean, he probably gonna get me back one day, and that's cool. But, he's gonna you know, and that's cool. cool. Yeah, when I'm old, he's probably gonna just be. But I'm pretty sure he'll appreciate it when he, he wants to smack the heck out of you. Let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you something, Alwo. <laughs> Once you become an adult and you look, and I'm guessing you have your own kids, you look back at your parent and you'd be like, you know what? I get it. I get why they was with me. You, know, I, you yeah. think like going outside, pulling a switch, making you take a shower. Yes. You think you? I get it. They shower. make you take a shower. shower. Yes. Y'all don't. Y'all didn't do no, that? that. That's abuse. <laughs> okay. Okay. Not take Time out. I ain't gonna take a shower. <laughs> but we did have to. <laughs> we, did, we did have to strip. Lots Hold of on. Yeah, I'm saying so that. That was the deal. Something that I didn't know. <laughs> Yeah, you never had that. So you, the shower to make it wet, so the yeah, so it stings more. more. Oh my god, oh, no. that's, that's that's never happened to y'all. So after you take a shower, are you crying and so knowing what's about to go down? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you try to dry off as as best you can. <laughs> like, oh my god. Okay, no. I just got whipped at that point, and I, <laughs> you know, I didn't, you know, I was. It was pants down, lay over the um, yeah. lay over the uh, the tub. Uh huh. I went over lay over the. Yeah. And then when my. Yeah, but when my mom knew that I was bigger and she yeah. couldn't hurt me, yeah. that's when she, the whipping stopped. That's when it was like hand to hand combat. Yeah. After that. Point. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would say, um, and don't grab for the belt. Don't yeah, don't grab for the yeah. belt because that's a threatening. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a threatening yeah. maneuver. This is very um child abuse. This um, is like, but, but that's what I. PTSD. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> So, PSA, I don't have any kids, so if there's any parents listening to this podcast, I'm sorry. Don't blame me. I'm just kind of giving you. you would beat your kid. Yeah, You'll you beat your son. You'll you beat your son. son. Yeah, I'm my son. Wow. So, <laughs> another video came up, and EJ sent it to us, and it was this... Uh, it was this mom, and she dragged her kid out of... I guess he was being disrespectful to the teacher. Mm-hmm. So, she was... He was in the cafeteria. She drags him out, and... Beats him in front of the. It's like if you went to elementary school, like the cafeteria is like a separate building, and mm-hmm. outside there's a walkway. So she beats him outside there. A friend is videotaping this whole thing, and she has the the, the little boy in front of the teacher apologizing. As he's trying to apologize, she's beating him more. She's calling him all types of all, uh, kind, all kinds of and yeah. she's going to oh. um bust it, break his face in. Yeah, she all types of that. now that. To me, that is crazy. But that video, as soon as you sent me that video, I don't know how people want to take this, but I said there was no male in the household to do that. Hmm. And that, I don't know if there's a male or not, but when I saw that video, that's what I said because I felt like that was extreme. It's like, I, I understand that the kid should be punished, but this kid was like six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. literally elementary school. Yeah, I mean, Char might have did the same thing, Char so maybe I shouldn't did. make it yeah. like there's no male in that. Because it's a male. And it yeah, was. it's a little boy, so Char might have did the same thing. But I'm like, this is it. Oh my God. Like, I'm all for discipline, but you drag this little boy in front of every. And the funny thing is, kids are so fickle. In two weeks, all them kids going to forget that. Because she's yelling at him, you embarrassed. In two weeks, they forget that all happened. The next mom will come in and be like. It'll move to the next one. Don't forget. I thought it was more embarrassing for her. And even the teacher was standing there look awkward. Like, like I didn't, yeah, I didn't really want to be a part of this. Uh-huh. So, again, my theory is there's no male in that household. Is it important for you guys to have two parents in the household? I mean, both. Well, no, you grew up with two parents in the household. Yeah. AJ. Um, I think it's important to have influence by both male and female just in general mm-hmm. so um is a mother is it ideal to have a mother and a father in a household i think it's the answer is yes because as you go through life your interactions are with both males and females mm-hmm. um is a single mother capable of raising a child absolutely but i think in that situation you have to ensure that there is some type of male influence there so they can get that side of um life and that's for both males for boys and girls because of of course girls Mm -hmm. have to learn how to interact with Mm -hmm. um the other kind of part and then um on boys with the other way now just add another element to it because of the society that we live in you have um situations where there's same sex um couples mm-hmm. where of course you have um t- uh, two women that could raise a child and you have two men that could raise a child i think in that situation 
those parents have to have to make a conscious effort to make sure that the child does get an influence from the other sex. So I think to answer the question overall, I just think it's ideal to have both a mother and father there. But if that if it's not, you have to ensure that the kid get the other side of what's what's missing. No. So what about you, AJ? Oh uh, yeah. Um I mean, personally, I don't feel like there is a structure that you necessarily need. I do think that you need to make sure that there are influences on both sides. I agree. Um, I think the single parent can be effective as long as they understand that they're going to have to put in more effort and there's going to have to be more things that they do to make sure that the child is successful, right? Absolutely. Um, because you can have this, you can have a kid in a two-parent home and they still be yeah, it's toxic. exactly yeah, it's toxic. Yeah. so i think it's really more um speaks to the parent themselves and how they're parenting and their style and are they looking um for ways to make sure that they're being effective as a parent right. than necessarily having a male you know i'm not male and a, a man and a woman but um I think really the structure is more about what you're going to do and how you're doing right. it Right. So I always say that um, it's very important to have two parents in the household because, man, kids is rough, man. And they will drive you a wall. They will drive you insane. I just told you we did everything in the book to try to talk to our daughter and it's still not working. Like you have to have I think you have to have two people in the household. And this is why we have to be very and what you were saying is that uh, you can have two parents and still be toxic. I agree with that. But this is why you have to be extremely selective of who you lay down with and have a kid with. And and we have to get away from the culture of I'm just trying to have sex with all these women and not actually understanding the consequences of that. So when I have a sex talk, my sex talk is going to be completely different. We talked about our sex talk last episode, mm-hmm. so we don't have to bring, <laughs> bring that up. But um, my sex talk is going to be different. Not only am I going to talk about diseases and babies, but I'm also going to talk about financial implications of having a baby, the sacrifices that goes into having a baby, that you're going to be dealing with this person for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. You're going to make it a permanent decision with a temporary person in any other situation these people would never speak but now they have to speak because there's a child involved so you have to and families have to really be you know what i'm saying like you really have to be selective in what we do as a family but as a single parent it is extremely difficult to raise a kid we just talk about time and finances Mm -hmm. alone right it's extremely difficult i mean even for marriage yeah. Um, you know, the thing is this God, man, woman, child. And mm-hmm. and, and we get in, sometimes we get into the argument like who should always come first. Mm-hmm. And um people always say that the children should some people say the children should come first, and that's completely wrong. Yeah. It always should be the parents should always come first because they're the ones coming together to raise the kids. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can't put the kid above that and then stress out everybody stress yeah out stress out it's imbalanced and it's going to stress out because people are devalued like one parent is more has more authority than the other one like and you you can't do it but everybody i think what you're saying is everybody has to be a one accord mm-hmm. in raising a kid and then also not only that is you need family you, mm-hmm. you do need family even though i'm the i always say the mm-hmm. natural predator of the parent is the grandparent yeah where grandparents come in and try to undercut everything you do but you do need a family structure a community in a sense because you still need like when i grew up i would go over my friend's house and his parents knew my parent my mother and they would sit there and talk i remember they was like she she was on the phone with my mom saying they're cussing upstairs and we were (laughs) we were but that's how close kind of everybody was because man raising again man raising a child is extremely extremely difficult man Right. Yeah. And I think that um, to your point, like even if you have two parents, like it really does take the whole community. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, the parents are there while they're at home. But when they're not at home and they're at their friends houses or they're out, like you really kind of need everyone to kind of be on the same page. And I think that's, again, another discussion of why it's important that as black Americans, we come together in our communities to help you know, raise right. children. But the only issue with that is that everyone has a different level of like what 
parenting and what yeah what it is yes because so, some just beat their kids obviously yeah, they some have just signs. beat their kids some just <laughs> let them do what they want you know what I mean so it has to be with like trusted people so I think that to your point you gotta not only know who you're dealing with as far as like when you're making a child mm-hmm. but also who you allow your child to yes, be yes the influences around well, them I yes. asked this question because I knew, like like I was saying I knew how I grew up I really grew up in a very close community and not only was it a close community the majority everybody was family so with you, Daryl, do you have that? I know because you're living in the city. Do you know who your daughter's friends are? Do y'all know who the parents are? Or what's the yeah. structure as far as no, that? No, we goes? actually do. We do. Okay. Yeah, cool. we do. Uh, I mean, of course, my wife knows them personally. I don't. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't want to know them personally, but my wife Thank you, <laughs> knows them personally. We we actually yeah, they, she has their phone numbers. They talk. Mm-hmm. Um, Really, they only reach out to me if it's an emergency. Yeah, like, hey, can we drop your, drop our kid off? We have to do something. So that's when they reach out to me. But yeah, we we have that. Okay, cool. Um, very shocked. That <laughs> You're very shocked. Yeah, but... because I didn't grow up in a like my neighborhood was more of the community. It wasn't family because yeah. my family's not close at all. So my neighborhood was more of the community. So I mm-hmm. I get that aspect. I might not like it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I might not want to be the the parent where the kids are knocking on the door saying can such and such come out and play mm-hmm. like i don't i don't want to deal with that but you know that kind of comes with the territory but i want to ask y'all how do y'all think uh parenting has changed because i think the problem we have is uh, well no, i don't think well, our demographic and kids right i don't want to disrespect anybody but the kids are soft now mm. like they're 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 softer in a sense that i think we dealt with more um we could probably take take more like if i yell at my daughter it's like it's the the end of the world yeah. like it's just oh my god i can't believe you yelled at me. yeah i got yelled at my mom all the time like that was at one point how she was communicating with yeah. me and we just took it for what it was but how do you think like because that can't be the kids because the kids are the same in a sense but how has parenting kind of changed because i think it's more of a everybody is a winner Everybody, you mm-hmm. know, everybody gets a reward. We don't want to give them an F. We'll give them a 60 because an F will make them feel mm-hmm. bad about themselves. But what do y'all think? I think with each generation, I, I, I would assume that every generation think the previous generation was softer than theirs. If yeah, I can agree. I can you know, agree with you that. Because, yes. you know, because when I think about myself, I mean, I would. My grandmother would give me her cigarette to go light on a to light on a stove to so she could smoke a cigarette. <laughs> or I was responsible for going and get cigarettes and alcohol for the people, for like my aunts and my. How could you, how could you put alcohol? Because, alcohol. The, because the neighborhood grocer knew who who I was. I would go to the bar. <laughs> That's wild. I would on, no, no, seriously, I would knock on the um the barroom door. I would say, "I'm coming to get some some for my own grandmother or my aunt." They'll go to the store, give me the um the alcohol, and I'll bring it back. So it's basically illegal. Yeah, so actually. or oh, it was absolutely illegal. Yeah, so like I mean that was the neighborhood I grew up in. Uh, I can't like to but to your point, I can't imagine ever having my like child doing that now. Doing that now or doing that with my child and so forth and so forth. And I, I would think, call it defect. Yeah, of course. So you kind of know what I'm saying? So um, <laughs> so but to your point, yes, yeah, so as generations move come forward and less and less things and things become less, you know, taboo. Or more, ta- I guess more ta- more taboo. Then we're gonna see our kids as being softer because some of our kids won't be able to get away with some of the things that we did when they were kids, and it's probably gonna be less more soft with their kids and so forth and so forth. But they just don't do anything. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I always tell people that coronavirus happened in the best generation it was supposed mm-hmm. to happen in because if coronavirus happened when we were kids, the whole family was gonna get infected. Like yeah. you just had to you had to take that out. Mm-hmm. But these kids, they weren't going outside anyway. Yeah. Like they like my daughter literally the only person who didn't complain about staying in the house was my daughter. Yeah. All she did was play Roblox and that was her entire day. They did not go outside, they don't go outside. And yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you said <laughs> like you so wanna angry. jump in. You're yeah, so cause I'm about it. No, because we were outside all the time. Like I didn't want yeah. I didn't want to be around my family. But do you I think you'll reach a the threshold at some point where it will revert back to how it used to be because how much softer can these kids get? (laughs) I mean, mean, yeah, I agree that um, as far as like interacting with them, like you like, and I think it goes with the times, right? Everyone's now about like, oh, we 
want to be so politically correct. We don't want to, you know, right. we, you know, we don't want to like abuse. It's like about abuse. Right. Like I don't necessarily think that when you're whoop- whooping a child, it could it's abuse until it crosses a line. Yeah. yeah. Um, so work like my stepdad was abuse. Yeah. That, that, that was that was abuse. <laughs> that was abuse. You were abused. I was um, abused. Okay. So I think <laughs> like as we kind of go over things, like the like the society is basically evolving and what they feel is accepted, right? Right. So children, in that respect, the culture has kind of birthed them to be a little bit softer, mm-hmm. to not be able to take things as much as we could. Um, but on the other spectrum of that is that like we're doing less raising of our children. Absolutely. Like, yeah, absolutely. I feel like social media is raising children. I feel yeah. like the media is raising children. We now have a lot more electronics. They're connected to a lot more things. Yep. They are learning about things well before we well, were learning yes. about things. Yeah. So on that side, they're like literally more grown than we were at their age. Right? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? No, it's not a good thing. Well, it's, the it's only serious. thing is it depends how it's done because right. like Again, with sex, I'm bringing up another story with sex. Right. Like to figure out what sex was, I he always I, is around sex. Like, yeah. No, I just no, no because that wasn't I wasn't around sex. I was just I, nobody talked about it, so you right. kind of had to discover it by yourself. So I remember we, uh, my friend, he he took his uh, his parents' porno, and we were all like in, at the beginning of the school, like as we're waiting for the bus to come. It had to be like twelve guys in this house <laughs> watching this, but that's how we discovered yeah what it was. So then. It's twofold. We still need to. Yes, they're exposed too early, mm-hmm. but also we kind of weren't exposed at all. So yeah, it's exactly. like we have to some kind yeah. of so gap in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. With that exposure, I think it's just not enough conversation right. happening. It's really right. very taboo to talk about sex in black communities. Now, am I saying that it doesn't happen? I'm sure there are great parents. I'm sure there are great examples, but it doesn't happen enough. So I do think that it's changing that way. I also think it's changing as in the structure of parenting, right? Mm-hmm. We're seeing lots of single mother situations happening and there's absent fathers or Mm -hmm. father situation um that you know they're sharing custody or trying to share custody and it's kind of like a volatile situation so um i think with the dynamic of the changing household for black americans it's changing how parenting is and how kids are you know coming up so yeah but what that means and i don't know and maybe we can do a comparison and probably post it later, but what are pregnancy rates and STD rates in comparison to our generation when you compare it to the kids today? Like, is, is it better or worse? Is it better or worse? It's like, you know, are less kids getting pregnant? In- I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've really looked at the statistics of that. I know it was yeah. on the rise for a long time, yeah. um, but as far as now, I'm not sure. No, STD rates, now we know that the same. <laughs> black people tend to be in the high with prevalence, especially if you talk about HIV. Like mm-hmm. we're, we're very high in those rates. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, it's, it's getting higher among older Really? Um, well, that's my and, point. Uh, so yeah, so, yeah, so what you say, like maybe although our kids are exposed more, Maybe that's a good thing in the sense of they're more aware of it and probably be more responsible than no, no. us trying to discover it and not knowing exactly what to do. Yeah, you know but it's saying? not only them being exposed, the, us explaining to them what they're actually being exposed to and them yeah. actually understanding that. That's why I said that, yeah, when my sex talk will be different because I'm going to break down every aspect to the point is you still do this. This is you. Mm-hmm. This, is just you. <laughs> this is your fault at this yeah. point that you learn every aspect of what could go wrong here yeah this i'm sorry just randomly uh i don't you was that y'all did sports in school right, right. so they Absolutely. had the thing i guess i got what it's called but it was a institution of christian athletes or whatever and let me let me keep going I, I i've never heard so it was some, I, forget, I forgot it's called it's something with christian athletes i can't i'll get the name eventually but there was this visit that we were, it was like this sex talk and it wasn't necessarily a sex talk it was just them showing different um, videos of what can happen to your genitalia if you um, actually got exposed to this STD. <laughs> that was our health education. Class. Yeah. So <laughs> not an institute of Christian. You never heard that? No, uh, Why would that be called. the yeah. institute of Christian? <laughs> no, I, I don't. I'm that's just that's just an organization <laughs> in, in pop- Louisiana. No, it's a popular organization. I guess I'll get the name of it eventually. But, but to I your point, that yeah. Name. Uh-huh. I don't understand that name. Like, why? Is that I think that's, that's, it's a Southern Christian athlete or something like that. It's something like but that. Go ahead, finish her. But to your point, is would that be your talk? 
to that extreme no. of turning the show on? Like, okay, because you, you that's get not... gonorrhea. No, uh, like, yes. You so, know? Yeah. No, yes, that would be a part of it. But they tried to do it like a scare tactic. What about getting it? It was almost not... like a scare straight. Yeah, it wasn't like that. actual yeah. education. And again, yeah. it's more than just a std like yeah. it's more that goes in i'm more talking about yes we're going to talk about the baby we're going to talk about uh diseases but i'm talking about the financial situation yeah. dealing with this person for the rest of life like i'm going to sit here and break down this is what child support is this is what it is going to be a year I mean, slide it to them do you have that you know, yeah mean that uh qt because yeah, QT they have cameras because, yeah. like <laughs> like it's a lot more stuff <laughs> that goes along that we're not teaching that we need to teach them. If we're going to teach them information, we need to teach them all of it. Yeah. And, ex- and thoroughly explain to them, like, like again, so Kylie's dad, biological dad, she needs to understand also the struggles of having a dad like trying to work with somebody who's not in the household. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, al- it's always much easier to have a kid by the people within the household. Yeah. And that's what they need to see the importance of. So that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm gonna push that. That's the important. I'm gonna hopefully hold off them be virgins as long as possible if I can help it. Okay. And uh, along with what you're saying, so now we're talking about you know you brought up a good point mm-hmm. is like the dad, the the biological father, mm-hmm. and then your role as the stepdad. Like, yes. What are things that we're seeing in the community that we kind of feel need to be improved on when we talk specifically about black males' role in parenting? Uh, what do we need to approve on? Mm-hmm. We need to, well, first of all, black male, what I struggle with is being more emotionally available. Mm-hmm. And we have, to, we have to be more emotionally available. And, and I'm not speaking holier than now. That's my issue with it. Like, again, I'm very stoic when I'm talking. I'm very, I don't get too up or too down about anything, but that can be a positive, but that can also be a negative. When she needs somebody to be like, when she's vulnerable, when she's crying about something, basically, I'm like, man, to learn handle this. And I don't need, <laughs> I like to yeah. That. No, really, I don't even say that. I just kind of walk away uh-huh. because I feel like she's better at equipped in handling it. So I think we need to be more emotionally available. We need to be OK with like showing emotions, not a weakness. And we need to not view it like this. And the kid needs both of it. I think sometimes we think like as a, as the father that they just need us financially. Uh-huh. They They're just need us to take care of the, thinking, yeah. Yeah, the household. No, they need uh-huh. us emotionally. They need us. Yeah. They need us to pat them on the back and say, um, a good job as well, and that's that's not what I got. Yeah, growing up, and I just thought about this YouTube video. It was on this video on social media where you probably saw it. Both y'all probably saw it where the kid was with their father, and he was doing like gymnastic moves, mm-hmm. and then he flipped her. He pushed. He um pushing the air. She kind of fell the wrong way. Right. And, oh yeah. He's yeah. A, he's a cheerleader. He's a really famous cheerleader yeah. coach. Yeah. yeah. And the way he handled that with her, with his daughter, in terms of that she was about to cry, mm-hmm. he, you know, in the way he kind of handled it. And kind of reassure her it's gonna be okay, and kind of talk her through it in terms yeah. of what went wrong. I think that's a good example of how fathers should be in the yeah. household. Yeah, and, and it was an actual. Like, um, go ahead. There was another story. It was a little boy. He was like, he feels insecure. I forgot what it was, and he was talking to his dad. He's crying, and the way his dad handled it, I thought, um, was perfect. Mm-hmm. That how he was telling, no, this is is it's not a loss, it's a lesson, and it's what you learn from it. And what I got emotional about that videos that I would not have handled it like that. And that's what I got. I don't know. We need to somehow deal with our trauma before Mm -hmm. we even sit here and deal, like, should probably even have kids because like, we're pushing that hurt on. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that we didn't like, we're not even admitting that we didn't like it. We're just not talking about it all and we're doing, we're pushing on for it and then wondering why our kid hates us. So I'm sitting there. That's something I struggle with now. Now, Mm -hmm. and I try to be as empathetic or sympathetic that's possible i try to be open and sometimes i had to tell myself I'm like daryl stop she needs you to be emotional mm-hmm. open up i even had to say hug her she wants to be hugged like i had to talk to myself like that oh wow but those are things you have to learn that's yes. good though Again, yeah. that's, that's, good. Yeah. That, that's a that's a mode that you were programmed like uh-huh. you were programmed to for that setting right so to deprogram yeah. that setting is like you have to talk yourself yeah, through. i have hug to talk her, myself to hug her hug her yeah yeah <laughs> hug her and then i was like is this a good time to hug is this yeah. like for me it's really weird yeah. and i have to sit there when like even when arguments are, or stuff i could like make a big deal about. I have to tell myself, don't make a big deal. Mm-hmm. Like let this go. It's fine. Like I have to sit here and actually go through it in my mind. 
Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so, if I reacted on everything I wanted to react, we all be miserable. Yeah. Oh <laughs> be miserable. Yeah. And to your your point, I think that you hit the nail on the head when you said that parents sometimes, when you ask who should be first in a household, right. they put the kids, right? right? But they're not understanding the impact that you have based on your mental stability mm-hmm. on the children. So right. I think that that's important. I think you guys are definitely in line. And when I think about parent. Uh, the, the, the father's role and what I see a lot of well, there's no presence yeah, honestly right, right, like right. they don't understand the importance of just presence just and not just, there. Yeah, just, not just being there and sitting there around, the per- around your child but you actually taking that active role mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. in spending time with your child find out find common th- things that you guys like in, in like that are in common like mm-hmm. right. I think that a lot of people can pull up, and when I talk to people who got their, their fathers around and they were actively involved with them, they can have all these conversations about me and my father love to do this, and this right. is something that helped right. to kind of like, like level set. It kind of encouraged me. It made me feel comfortable. Um, it like it, it improved the the parenting role for that person. Like mm-hmm. it was such a in, big impact on the kid. Mm-hmm. And I think it's those moments that we that a lot of fathers miss out on because they're not present. Right. And then that affects the kid, right? So yeah. you have young women with daddy issues because the daddy mm-hmm. wasn't there or the daddy was abusive, and right, so right. they're looking right, right. for that to try to fill that void. Right. Or you have, you know, the you know young young men who have mom issues or even daddy issues because maybe the dad was too abusive Mm -hmm. or the dad wasn't there. So they're looking for that role model and they're looking in the wrong Mm -hmm. places. So there's a lot of things that we just don't account for in parenting that really influence how the child Mm -hmm. does uh, behave later on in life. And what I just wrote down is what I wanted to say um, is we always talk about quality over quantity, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with kids, it's reverse. It's quantity over quality. You want to spend as much time as possible with your kid. It's not like what happens is uh, parents who are not in their kid's life, right? Once they pick up their kid, they're trying to make this moment important. So they're taking them to, to like the fair, the zoo, the movie, because oh, wow. they're just trying to make this the biggest yeah. moment. They're trying to make the most out of the moment. But what they miss out on is not spending as much time. It's the small stuff. Yeah. The small jokes, the why we say this. What did this happen? Mm-hmm. These little moments, we're just sitting down watching TV and this happened. Yeah. Like, that's the stuff that we're missing out. And that's what creates a bond. Not At the end of the day, ki- kids don't really care about, you know, these big lavish stuff. They they, they want you to be there. It's I, took, there. I yeah. took my daughter to Disney World. We spent a lot of money and she bitched the entire time <laughs> because she wanted to go to the pool. And I was so mad <laughs> about this. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> they they don't care about that. So it's about the quantity. It's about the little stuff that you have to spend. You want to spend every moment with them because you you know when you blink, man, they'll be they'll be older. And that's how I kind of like forgave my dad because I realized, man. I can't punish him enough as time is already punished him. Mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's it's, true. It's, it's, that's, I, ooh, that hit something. <laughs> that hit. Because it, 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 it is. Because even with my dad, I remember, I can remember, I just remember big moments. Like, I remember mm-hmm. going to the monster truck show with him. He'll take me to right. that. And but I never remember anything in between. Yeah, that that's yeah. Like he would like yeah. basketball games, mm-hmm. and proms, graduate, like all the stuff that was missed out on. He yeah. don't have to punch. He's gonna hurt for that, and that's yeah. why we want to be more there. You yeah. know, with our kids. I'm gonna ask you one more question before we guys close out. Um, do you guys? What would you tell being black kids? Like, what are some things that we would tell our kids differently than maybe like a white family would would kind of instill? I, that's all. Hard question. Loaded. It's, it's loaded because <laughs> it's loaded because I don't want to insult insult anyone. Um, but I think more than race, I think parenting skills is really something. It's you could probably tell similarities and differences based off of social economic status more than right. race because I'm pre- some of these southern parents, white parents. I'm pretty sure they're just as rough on their kids as as we are in terms of who, who are not as financially stable as others. So I'm going to answer the question as far as from a financial perspective, that just be one present with your kid and, and also don't think that this money to solve all your issues with your, with your, with your, with your right. kids. You just have, and that's for everyone, you have to be present in all, as much as you can be. 
and be willing to discipline your kid in situations where they need to be disciplined and encourage them in moments that they need to be encouraged. So right. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. What about you, Eden? Um, I think that um, things that happen that are different um, for us is we don't have those discussions about financial literacy. Yeah, yeah. So that's, um, a like, that's a huge one. That's a huge one. We need to start having those discussions and prepare them for the future to be able to live as individuals because they grow up and they stay connected to their parents right forever mm-hmm. parents are always taking care of them and it's the role should be reversing as you get older yeah i gave my kids uh they got to 25 but yeah take, <laughs> well, no, too long. Like, that okay. kind of, <laughs> i thought you were that great but to expand on your what you said i think that financial literacy is more most likely to happen in a more financially stable family in comparison yeah, to absolutely. one who would. So that's why, yeah. But financial literacy should be taught in school. It, it, absolutely. I feel like it should be. Yeah, it, absolutely, yeah. 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 But also, you can get... The, 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 also, some really good... Fam, some really poor people have a great sense of financial literacy. Because they have to. Because they, 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 they have to. Yeah. And they teach that to their kids. So, like... My dad isn't the richest person in the world, but his sense of financial literacy and how how financially free he is now as, as an adult is something I feel like he should have been teaching me along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and didn't get taught to me. And then his father's before that. And that, like we have examples of black men and women that were great with finances. They just never taught the kids. So yeah. um, we need to do more of that. We need to do more educating about our culture, where our cultures come from, understanding the differences and the expectations that society might have on them. Of course, they need to make their own path, right? They need to under, but they have to have that foundation where they understand um, their culture because it's not being taught in schools. It's not being, you know, um, communicated in media as much. Mm -hmm. I think other communities, um, if we talk about Asian communities, they know their culture. We have a different, of course, history and why we don't understand our culture. But we definitely have the opportunity to engage in those conversations and talk about our culture. Uh It's going to be different, but we have the opportunity opportunity. Um, I think three, we need to also um, think more about um, how we're raising them to be and interact with people, right? That's a recurring theme that we talk about. We need to have them to be open to communicate. Uh, I think if you look at other parents, they talk to their children about almost anything. We don't talk to our children enough, especially not about the things that are affecting them at their age, right? Right, right? So in middle school, they're already inundated with sex. Even in elementary school, they're inundated with sex and we don't ever talk to them about So those things, we need to create a environment they feel comfortable so they will have those conversations with us. So those are some things I see that happen differently in different cultures, but I would love for us to have more in our culture as well. Huh. All right, and, and what I add, first of all, I agree with each and everything y'all two said. The only thing I would add to it is self-love. Mm-hmm. And I will understand yeah. that that in this conversation me and my daughter have all the time. I tell you when we watch like mix this, we're always talking about hair, um, skin color, how to mean sort of society is um self love to love love who you are, love your skin. Yeah, you're different. You need to embrace your the differences. Also take pride in your culture. That's another thing you talking about teaching the culture, but also take pride. We are the most resilient race in yes, the world. We are. And we That's should it. be yeah. proud of that. You should be proud of where you come from. Don't let people demean you um, because you want to be proud of it. Like we started like as a race, man, coming to America, we started from the bottom and we have like people who are on, who are billionaires. Dr. Mm-hmm. Dre's a billionaire. Jay-Z is a billionaire. We see what LeBron is like. like. We have people who are who made it out that if they were slaves, look back, never thought this was possible. Right. And you need to look you need to look at your resiliency as your race and use that as empowering. Yeah. So that's definitely what what I would I would teach. All right. All right. So that's gonna be it for our episode. We ran a little longer, didn't we? Yeah. But that's with good conversation. conversation. That needs to be happening. Yes. 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 Please let us know what you guys think. Um, you guys' parenting style. Um, are you whipping your daughter as well as your son, or just the son? Within the whipping window. Yeah, within the whipping window. He what is your whipping? That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, please like, subscribe, share. We're on YouTube. We're on yes. Facebook. Yes. Lessofamanpodcast.com. We have our website up. So SoundCloud, on. Anchor. We have um, so much, YouTube. man. YouTube, yeah. Uh, you can Instagram. Just... Oh, yeah, Instagram too. Yeah. Lessofamanpodcast.com. Like, subscribe, share. Um, 
Please support us. We appreciate your feedback and your responses. It's been a great running so far, and we just going to continue to give you more. And if you want to send me money personally, that's fine, too. I will never stop that. Oh, that's pretty much Don't worry, but we don't have a cash app set up. <laughs> Do we really? No, we don't. Oh, we I was should. about to say. Well, the cash app will be under my name. Yeah. I'll <laughs> 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 everyone's money. <laughs> Until next time, y'all. Yeah. Peace. Peace.